Hello, this is Lord Og. Yes, it is. And welcome to another Red Dead Redemption 2 video. I've really battered these videos, I know, but I'm just enjoying them. And uh, this game's great still. So, this is going to be, as I said in the last video, it's going to be a satchels one. How to get all the satchels that you can get, including the best one in the game. Now, first, let's have a look at my outfit, because I just like it. I look really, I think I look really good. Not too keen on the gloves, but everything else looks pretty damn good. Anyway, let's carry on with what we're doing. So first, let me give you an introduction to the satchels and how to get to them, etc. Now, firstly, what you need to know is... that I'm going to pause it a second to stop time passing. Right, first, what you need to know is that you cannot just have any a satchel crafted for you. Every satchel has to be unlocked first. They all have a little lock item on them. And you can't have Pearson, because Pearson that does the crafting of them, you can't have Pearson craft them for you until you unlock them. And I'll explain how to unlock them in a minute. First, I'm going to explain what the satchels are and what they do. So first, let's go to Pearson. Now, everything I speak of when I'm talking of buttons I press is on the PS4. So if you've got the Xbox, you'll have to do the uh, equivalent buttons. So we press triangle. You know, Arthur, I can always make you a new satchel if you're tied on space. And Pearson comes up and you click on satchel. So it's X on satchel. Now, as you can see, you've got... Now, I've got them all unlocked. So, it's I can't unlock them again. I've got them all unlocked and cra all crafted. But anyway, the satchels are this. You've got the tonic, ingredients, kit, provisions, materials and valuables. Now, when you start the game normally, you can only carry three of every item that goes in any of these satchels. That could go in any of these satchels. Of course, you carry one satchel on your waist. But it's your very basic sat satchel when you first start. And no matter which section you go to in your satchel, whether it be tonics, ingredients, kit, whatever, you can only carry three of each item. When you finally get to the point where you can come to Pearson and get them crafted, if you, let's say, get the tonics satchel crafted, you can then carry ten of any item that's in the tonics section of your satchel. And then, if you, say, you get the ingredients one crafted, then you'll be able to carry ten of every section in the tonics and the ingredients. It doesn't mean whichever satchel you've got equipped, you can only get you can only carry more of the ingredients in that particular satchel. It counts for all the satchels that you've unlocked and had crafted, sorry. That you've had crafted. So if you've got like the tonics, ingredients and provisions satchel crafted, then you can carry ten of everything in those three sections of your satchel. But you'll still only be able to carry three of every item in your kit, materials and valuables until you craft them. Then finally, I hope this is clear, I hope I'm explaining it well. And then finally you get to the Legend of the East satchel. For this you've got to have crafted all other satchels. You've got to basically have them all crafted. All these six here. Once they're crafted you can then craft the Legend of the East satchel. Okay? So, and that's how you unlock it. You can't actually unlock the Legend of the East satchel until you, until you, until you've uh, crafted all these. That is the re re requirement. That is the requirement to unlock that satchel, and then you can craft it. Once you've crafted the Legend of the Whiskey East satchel, <laughs> then I'll just show you mine. You can then start to carry huge amount, 99 of everything. So look, 99, 12 of 99, says at the bottom, 79 of 99, 25 of 99, and it happens with everything. Tonics, I can carry 99 of them. I've got 99 chewing tobacco. I've got, you know, these are your ingredients, things you pick up, things like that. And then, of course, your materials, kit, and valuables. And you can carry 99 of everything that goes in them. So now, so now let's get to what it takes to unlock these satchels so to unlock most of them we can do it by coming to the tithing box as you go through the game eventually you will get a tithing box set up it's a box that you can donate money or valuables to the camp so that you can buy so that you can upgrade the camp 
by using the ledger. This is the ledger. It makes a note of things that people donate. And also you can upgrade your, your, your wagons here. Basically your camp. You can upgrade most of the wagons and, uh, and, and then I'll add a few more things at the end. Now what we need, the most important thing we need here is the leather working tools in the top right corner. That is $180. That's a lot of the money in the earliest part of the game, but you really do need it. And once you've got them, that is the first requirement of all the sats of all the satchels. That's one requirement done of all the satchels. Then you've only got one more to do for each satchel. And you can do, again, most of them here where we are. So let's start with the tonic satchel. To unlock it, only unlock it, this isn't so you can have it crafted, just to unlock it, you need to upgrade, you need to come to this ledger, and you need to upgrade the medical wagon twice, which is here on the left hand side. So you need to like pay the $24 and the $40. Upgrade it twice, and as long as you've got the leather working tools, you will unlock the tonic satchel, and then it can be crafted. So to unlock the provision satchel, you of course um, upgrade the provisions wagon. Upgrade it twice and you will unlock the provisions satchel to be crafted. Then we have the kit satchel. Now, to make it so you can unlock the kit satchel, we now go to the, you click on the triangle for contribute and you open up the tithing box. Now what you need to do here for the kit satchel is donate three valuables. So for me, if you look, it says give item in the bottom right corner, square. So I click that, and, you've, and you, it comes up with the valuables I have with me. So I could donate, for example, here, uh, one of those two watches, the jewel, large jewellery bag, and the gold nugget. That's three valuables. If I donate them to those three valuables, and I bought the leather working tools, I can then, uh, oh, I can then unlock the kit satchel that will then unlock the kit satchel for you then to unlock the valuable satchel you need to give money so you just press x and you want to donate fifty dollars if you donate fifty dollars and you already have the level working tools then that means you have now unlocked the uh, valuables satchel so that's four done that's tonic provision kit and valuable now we need to unlock materials and ingredients right to unlock materials, you need to craft three recipes at the scout fire. Now here, on this camp, the scout fire is up here. The scout fire is not the campfire that you build out in the wild. That is a campfire. The scout fire is here for this one. And it's, this, it's just kind of out of way. And uh, you just go here. And you just... I mean, it could be different if you're in a different camp, of course. But find where it is. You can go to Pearson and when you and go to upgrade and look through the and there's one where it says upgrade the scout fire, it'll show you where it is. But anyway, if you press triangle, then you can come here and that's it, you're sat by the scout fire. And then all you've got to do is craft three ingredients, just craft cook. And then you can do anything. You could do basically these three here. Three different horse stimulants. You can do maybe craft a couple of uh, an improved arrow, a small game arrow, and an uh, improved throwing knife. Three different recipes. You know, you can. that's all you've got to do. Just craft three different things, and that will unlock the materials um, satchel. So now that's five unlocked. Now, to unlock the last thing, the last satchel, which is the ingredient satchel, you need... Oh, let me just switch position. You need to take five animal carcasses to Pearson. And that can be any five. It doesn't matter. You can chuck a... You can throw... But I, I think they have to be five different ones. So, for example, you can throw a squirrel in your bag, a bird in your bag, um, a frog, and then you might throw a deer on the back of your horse and tie a rabbit to, to a saddle. That's five different carcasses. And you bring these carcasses over here to Pearson. You don't have to bring them all at once. You can, you know, you, you can bring them, you can do them on different days. As long as you eventually bring you five animal carcasses, you will then unlock the ingredient satchel. Okay. Whew, that was quite a long part, that. 
and you've done well if you've listened so far. So if you've unlocked these, now we can craft them. And this is actually the harder part. That was just the easy part. So now we need to get... I'm going to show you how it works now. Let me just go to crafting upgrades again. Satchels. Now you start to need actual animal pelts to unlock, to craft, not unlock, to craft the satchels. So for the tonic satchel, you need deer, buck and elk. Ingredients, we're going to need deer, badger, squirrel, and so on, right? So I'm going to tell you now the list of what you need. You're going to need seven deer pelt. And remember, these all have to be perfect. So three stars. I'll explain that in a minute soon when I show you the animals. When I show you the animal section. Now, so you need seven deer, two elk, and then perfect pelts of these. Buck, badger, boar, bison, squirrel, cougar, beaver, panther, iguana, rabbit, raccoon, and wolf. So there's a lot of work to do. Now... And then when you, let's say here, let's say you're tonics, let's say you, you kill a deer and you get a perfect pelt, you get a perfect bulk, you get a perfect elk, you can come back and just craft it. And once you've crafted all these six, you can then craft that. Now that list I've just read out, that will cover every single satchel. If you go out and you get those pelts, you can get, you can craft all these satchels, even the Legend of the East satchel, that is also calculated in there. Now, there is one warning I want to give. When you get a new pelt, save the game. Because if you die, you lose the pelts. The game will reload and you'll not have the pelts anymore. So, always re remember that. If you're doing this and you're out hunting for pelts, for these, for, to do your satchels, then when you get a new, when you get a new pelt, pelt, just give it a quick save the game and boom, you're fine. Because then, if you die, you can reload your saving, and you will start off with those satchel, with those uh, pelts back on your horse, so you don't lose them. Okay, so now we're going to do where you can find the animals in the game for all those that you need for the satchels. Now, I won't be killing them all because all I need to do is show you where to find them. I've already done all the killing. I really don't want to go hunting them all down again. So. You, but remember, you've always got to look for three stars. I will explain what three stars are when I'm doing the boars, which I'll be doing soon. So I'll just show you where the animals are, and then you can find them yourselves and kill them. So uh, let's get started with that. Okay, so we're going to start with the deer and the buck. We can get them in the same place. Just let me show you where I am on the map. So I'm kind of here. You're not far from in Scarlet Meadows. You're pretty close to where your camp is. Look, the camp's just south there of me near Rhodes. Here you can now I want to stress deer and buck you can get everywhere. If there's a lot of you well, this is a buck, as you can see. Now I I didn't look for a perfect one, I don't need to. But this is a buck, and there's deer running around all this area too. If you find a place with a lot of deer, there's gonna be a buck coat close by. Getting these is no problem. They're all over the map. So seven perfect deer pelts and one you need one buck. Now the game suggests that for bulk and deer, you use a rifle or a bow with poison arrows. I agree, I use a scope Springfield rifle because it doesn't hit as hard as the rolling block, so you shouldn't destroy anything. So yeah, I use a spring, scope Springfield and just do a headshot. You should always pick up a, a perfect pelt. Okay, let's go on to the next. Okay, now we're on the ball. So there's a, oh, there's a deer, I told you they come from <laughs> all over. So I'm going to have to pause the video a couple of times here probably because there are a few things I want to explain. Okay, let's first start with quality. Now, to see the quality of any animal, you need to first have studied it. To study it, if it's an animal that doesn't run away like a tamed horse, you can stand right next to it, lock onto it with L2 on the PlayStation 4 and uh, controller. And then you can just hold down, I think it's right one, and it studies it. If it's something that flies away, runs away, whatever, then you best do it from a distance through your binoculars. Just lock in, zoom in, and then study it. After that, at that from that point on, you will be able to see the quality of that animal, what kind of pelt you'll get if you kill it. And to find that out, you look here. Okay, so as you can see, all three, well, I'll call them stars, all three stars are little, they're white. 
If any are grey, then that means it, it takes off a quality. So if it's two white, one grey, it's a good quality. If it's one white, two grey, it's poor quality. Three white is best quality. So if you kill this ball right, you should get a perfect quality uh, pelt. Now just like with the deer and the buck, the game suggests you use a rifle or a bow with poison arrows to kill it. I agree, I'm not going to put what I use because I do use those same things anyway. Right, so I've hit it in the arse. <laughs> I, I know it's going to not keep the quality shooting in the arse, but hey, I wanted to shoot it in the arse. Because I wanted it to live. This is a poison arrow. And this is why I like poison arrows. Right, let me show you where I am. So I'm here at Matic Pond. Although you can get them all around this area, you can see on my map there's a couple of boar pictures on there. So you can get them all around this area. There's plenty of places to get boar. Now since I shot it up my arse, it didn't kill it straight out. But of course, it's poison. So it's basically just going to keel over and die. So now I get to run in and stab it in and stab it. Which I like to do sometimes. Especially if, if I'm in a bad mood, then I'll just stand and watch it die. I don't think I need to say any more about that. Okay, I want to pause it again to show you something. Okay, so what I want you to notice here is that because I shot the uh, boar in the arse, if you look at the quality now, it's gone from perfect quality, which was three stars, down to two stars. But what I want you to notice is what happens when I skin this animal. This skinning is dirty work, but someone's got to do it. Okay, so here we go. Now, what I want you to look at is the bottom right corner. So as you can see, it says I have a perfect boar pelt, which seems impossible because it was only a two-star uh, body, dead body, of the, of, the, uh, of the boar. But there is a trinket you can get called the Buck Antler Trinket. And what it does is it says, Player receives higher quality skinned animal parts. So, for example, if you kill a paw, an animal that's poor quality, it's possible to skin it and get a good quality pelt. Just like if you skin an animal that is good quality, you can get a perfect quality pelt. So it might be good to invest in trying to get this trinket before you do all this, because then you can still have sometimes kill something that's two star quality, and you might just get a perfect pelt from it. And so it's worth having. You've just got to kill the legendary book. And you can go from there. Okay, so I've explained everything I need to now about quality, etc. So we should be able to get through the animals a bit quicker now. So let's get to that. For next, we're going to do the elk. So this is where I am on the map. I'm in the right-hand corner, or the east, kind of northeast corner of the map. Let me zoom out and show you better. Now, you can get elk on like in any kind of mountainous area so you can like go over to the left here to this side and around here you get them here as well all around that area and like i say anywhere where there's plenty of mountains you'll usually get elk i find this to be a great spot usually there's at least two or three here maybe four and here i've got three i've got i'm just going to show you through binoculars i don't need to kill them so i've got three elk stood together there and you only need two so kill two elk from, from up here and uh, you can move on to the to the next part. But remember, two perfect quality. Always got to be perfect. Now the game suggests that you use a long scope rifle or bow with improved arrows. I agree. I usually use a rolling block rifle. You can use poison arrows because it will put it down. It will kill it. The poison always kills everything. But if you want to be sure of a perfect quality headshot with a rolling block rifle, and you, oh, you, you'll have no problem. Oh, and there's a moose if you want to have a look at one. There you go. Let's move on. Okay, so now we move on to the badger. Let me show you where I am on the map. I am here. So it's basically all in the same area. The deer, the boar, the buck, and the badger. All of them can be done around this area. You can have your roads in your camp just at south. And uh, this is where you'll pick it. Now remember, badgers are not eternal. So it's best to come at it at night time or when it's getting just starting to come night. And there you can see it just sneaking away there from me. Thinking it's getting away. I can see you. And uh, there you go. So that's the badger. Now this weren't a perfect quality. I just wanted to show you where it was. And I just wanted to kill it because I could. Now the game suggests you use a varmint rifle for this for the badger. I agree. It does the job perfectly well. And uh, it shouldn't, if, it's a, if it is perfect quality, it shouldn't ruin the, uh, the pelt any. 
Anyway, let's move on to the next. Okay, I'm going to try and get this one done a little bit quicker. So, we're doing the raccoon now. And as you can see, I'm still in the same kind of general area as I have been for just about everything so far. Except the elk, but everything else. Which is roads and the camp are just to the south, and it's around this area. So, what the game suggests is that you use a varmint rifle. Again, I've got no arguments with that. And uh, I weren't even trying for the headshot there, I just wanted to kill it. But you can see where we are, and the varmint rifle works just fine. So, uh, let's move on to the... Oh, and don't forget, night time. It does help. Let's go on to the next. Okay, so now we're going on to the one animal that's probably more easier to find than the deer. And that is the rabbit. It's everywhere. You can't take a step without tripping over one. Millions of them are running about. Trust me, you'll find a rabbit. So I'm going to show you on the map. I'm stood here. Doesn't matter. I could just put an X. I could put a marker on the map anyway, and there'll be a rabbit there. There are thousands of them in this game, so you cannot miss them. So just go wherever you feel. See a rabbit, and the game suggests that you use your varmint rifle. So just shoot it. There you go. Varmint rifle killed rabbit. That's it done. That's all we need to do with that. We want it next. Okay, so now it's time for the squirrel. And uh, there's plenty of these about as well. And there's different variations of this. Red, grey, black. So you'll find one easy. But you can't guess where we are on map. Yes. <laughs> We're still at Scarlet Meadow. We're still, we still have roads in our camp just to the south. Okay, let's go on with the squirrel. Now, for the squirrel, the game suggests that we use a bow with small game arrows. Easy enough to make. And they are perfect for the, small, the really small things like rats and squirrels and anything that are really tiny and just too small for a uh, for a varmint rifle so there you go we'll just hit it and if you see this one it, it did keep its quality small game arrows don't usually break the quality of a uh, of fur uh, there you go so that's how you get the squirrel let's move on to the next now okay so it's now time to do the bison big thing now the exciting thing about the bison is we're actually moving a little bit further away. Oh yes, we finally moved. We are between the H and the A in New Hanover. This is honestly the best place to come for them. As you can see on my screen here, there are loads of them. Let me just get my binoculars up and show you. Look at this lot. There's loads of them down there. A good probably 10, 15 all down there. So it, this is a great place. Just look round the like, round between the H and the A of New Hanover, and you'll find one easy. Now the game suggests that you use a uh, long scope rifle, I believe it was, and I agree. I mean, you can use a bow with improved arrows, but you'll have to get closer. I mean, if you just use a long block, uh, uh, like a rolling block rifle, it's most it's just about the most powerful rifle in the game anyway. Get a long scope on that and. Yeah, you can take one of these down with a headshot. Just make sure you get a headshot because they are very big. And uh, they, don't, they don't die easy to anything else. But this one's a three. And uh, I'm going to go and get now. You can see them all running away. There is loads of them. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the beaver. Now for the beaver, uh, there's two places you can really go. There's one place that's west of Van Horn where the legendary beaver is. There's usually a few around there. But well, this is my favourite place, the Owangila River. This is a great place for beaver. And uh, usually you find several here. Now the game suggests for beaver that we use a uh, varmint rifle. As you can see there was one there, there's one there, there's a couple up there. This time, the last time I saw this many wet beaver was on Pornhub. But this a load here too. And, uh, yeah, just pick one of these. I think one of these is a three. There's a rabbit there, but I didn't shoot it. So, yeah, just varmint rifle and wait. By the way, don't shoot them while they're out there, or you have to go swimming after them, and it gets messy. If you wait long enough, they will come into shore, and they'll, as soon as they do, just shoot them then. And, uh, yeah, beaver aren't hard to get, no problem. Okay, I just quickly need to explain something here. I came for the cougar, which is what we are now, but when I got to this place, it's quite a dangerous place, and a grizzly bear came, so I ended up putting a grizz uh, poison arrow in, the arrow in the grizzly bear. So then I was too fixated trying to get to the grizzly bear, because it was dying from the poison, that I didn't see the cougar appear. And by the time I realised the cougar was there, it attacked me. 
And uh, I didn't manage to push it off, and I did manage to put a poison, ar poison arrow in it. And I knew it was dead from that point, and it ran off. But, you know, it does die. And then I went to the bear. For some reason, I skinned the bear and started walking around with a good, we only a good quality pelt. I don't know. And it took me, it took me a like, little while to realise I'm just that this weren't worth much, so I just put it down. But the cougar is uh, is actually a three star. So I will. I'd, I forgot because I was too wound up with all the cougar attack and everything. I did forget to show you where I am on the map. So I will show a quick picture of that uh, at the end of this uh, clip. Now the game suggests that for the cougar you use a rifle or a bow with poison arrows. I always use the poison arrows with a cougar as I do with a grizzly bear. And most things, I must admit, I know I've said use rolling block, blah, 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 but I just about use poison arrow for everything, to be honest with you, because it seems to kill everything. So, yeah, there you go. Use a, use a poison arrow for a cougar, it usually works really well. But you can use most rifles, we'll put it down to. So, uh, here's, the, here's the place on the map, then we'll move on. Okay, so now we're going to do the Iguana. Now, without going into New Austin, which is Blackwater area, there's only one real place you can actually get Iguana, and that is on this island that's just to the west of your camp, or to the west of Rhodes. It's the only place. Now, there is you can uh, upgrade your camp to have its own boat, which you can use to you know, row across, but uh, you can actually use your horse. There you go. <laughs> it's dead. I found one for you. But you can actually use your horse to get across. The horse won't drown. It will get you across. It's a bit slow. Slower than a boat. But trust me, it's fine. Now, for the Iguana, the game suggests the Varmint Rifle. Which, again, is fine. It does work. Now, on here, there's quite a few of them. You shouldn't have to look wrong for long. This is the island you get the Trihorn hat in that little boat that's over the other side of the island. But there's lots of iguana on here, so you should have no problem whatsoever. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the next. Okay, so now on to the panther. Quick apology, I've already shot it and it's just about dead. You'll hear it grumble once and then it dies. I tried to record, but before I could record, it, it ran out of the forest. It made my horse buck and throw me off. And then it ran running at me. So I shot it and uh, yeah, I think so you didn't really see much of that. You just kind of see it die. So anyway, this this that's you've seen where the best thing is. That's actually below the Braithwaite's Manor, just south of Rhodes, and uh, it's a beautiful animal, but it's so dangerous. Probably the most dangerous of, of any. Beats the grizzly easy. Anyway, for this, the game suggests a rifle with either express or high velocity ammo, or a bow with improved arrows. I say screw it. Use poison. Poison arrows always works. Go for poison arrows. It'll just drop dead. It, it won't attack you. It'll take three or four steps and then run off and die anyway. So, there you go. I use poison arrows for everything. I love them. Okay, and finally we get to the final animal, the wolf. Now, there aren't many places you get a dedicated pack of wolves on this map. So, there is, but there is one. And it's here. It's at the north end of Big Valley. The place where we were with the cougar. Just follow that road north. I'm sorry I didn't zoom back. But I forgot to. But just follow that road north and you will come to be, to this area and you'll recognise it. Now, this is when they respawn, there's about five, four or five wolves each time. So it is dangerous. If they get it, if they get on top of you, you're done. So make sure you're ready. Now for wolves, it says use a rifle or a bow. And for the bow you can use regular arrows, that will do it. But personally, I don't mess, mess about with them. I use a rifle usually when it comes to... Um, unless they're close, then I'll use something like a, a panic. <laughs> and use like my Lancaster and just shoot about four bullets in each one. That's just because I panic. But if they're to distance, I like to use something like a Springfield, Scope Springfield. So that... Uh, I thought, again, I always worry that the rolling block's going to do too much damage to the pelt. So, as you'll see here, you can't see them on the map yet. But once I get over to this side here, they'll just spawn. Suddenly, no, I didn't get them there. I get them. But there you go. Now they're here. So luckily the horse bolts, but don't throw me. The Ardennes is a really good horse for that war horse. But it got me a nice gap. 
so that now I can just uh, use my rifle to finish them. So there's five wolves, there's a good chance that you're going to hit at least one out of these five and it's going to have, you know, perfect quality. And it did. I did get one from these, but I don't really need it because it's to show you. But this is a great place to come. So remember where the cougar is. Go and kill the cougar, just keep coming north. And you will see this on the map. And you can come here. So that's it, guys. If you've listened to the end and you've watched all this, you are a legend. I hope it's helped you. I hope you managed to get all your satchels. Get that Legend of the East satchel. 99 of every item. Amazing thing it is to have. And uh, I'll be back soon, hopefully, with another guide or at least another video for maybe this game, maybe another. Who knows? But you take really good care. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed it, please drop me a like and spill out, give me a comment if you wanted me to show you something else in the game. And I'll try and see what I can do. So you take care and bye for now.